Hi, JP. How's it going? I'm doing pretty well, Sean. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Whiteboard wad number 14. 14. Two whole weeks of this. Two whole weeks. Super fun. What do we have in store for our question of the day today? Oh, question of the day today is when is it appropriate to put a Christmas tree up? As you can see over there, we now have our Christmas tree up. What do you think, Shauna? Um, December 24th, about like <laughs> 6 p.m. as far as I'm concerned. Nice. All right. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to say July. Um, no, we, we, my family always did it as a tradition on a day, so Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, go out and get a Christmas tree because now Thanksgiving's over. So my family, my mom would start bringing out box after box after box and then we'd get those three boxes all done and the lights would go up and then all of a sudden another box would appear for my dad and I to put up and there would be more lights to go up and more decorations to go up and pretty soon it was kind of all of December that we were putting up Christmas decorations. So as far as I'm concerned, put a tree up December 24th. Anyway, doesn't make me a ball humbug, but just like that, all the stuff out. Anyway. What do we have in store? It looks like we're doing some good curves for the warm-up. Yes, good warm curves. Up, right up there? Uh, I think, yeah, yeah right there. It's somewhere. It's somewhere over in that area. Um, so curves, curves, get that nice and warm for the workout today. Um, and then we're going to be going into some running intervals, which is, I'm sure you're very happy about. Be 100% sure you guys do warm-up before you start on yes. the running. Or this whole first set is just going to be a warm-up and you're going to waste it. So. Be sure you warm up. You can even add some pigeon pose stretches in there and all that kind of stuff into the good curves warm up if you if you want to and make sure you're nice and warm. Um, second thing will be to find a place to go. Um, if it is at your house, that's fantastic. But make sure there's no cars backing out of driveways. Make sure there's no stoplights, no stop signs, no reasons that you guys are going to have to stop because you're going to be going for a duration of time and you want to make sure that you make each of those durations of time and the goal for this, the score of this, is how far you go. So, so you don't want to be interrupted. Yes, and how do they know, like, you know, what, how far they went? I mean, what's some ideas on to get that? Yeah, so I mean, there's a bunch of different apps and things that you can use that will track your distance. Um, if you have, like, I have a Fitbit, so that'll do it for me. Um, and there's a lot of different running watches, but also you can get apps on your phone. Uh, if you have a smartphone, that'll be a good way for you. It, most apps will tell you your time and your distance at the same time. Um, so you can get both of those uh, at once there. So you can keep track of your running intervals and it'll also be keeping track of how far you're going as you're running there. Wow, I thought you just went out and ran. Boy, I have a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, what this is designed to do is this is engine building. We talked about that we're in the middle of this engine building cycle. And this is literally this entire thing is going to be keeping your heart rate up and while keeping your heart rate up, moving it at different degrees of up for different lengths of time. Mm -hmm. So it's just like everything else we do in here. We don't just do the exact same thing and build fitness to a particular level. We build it higher, lower, shorter, quicker, etc. We did some sprinting last week. So this time we're gonna be doing some jogging and running for Keeping it constantly varied. That's right. Um, okay, so uh, I guess we're, after we get through the warm up, the first thing we're going to be starting off with is three rounds of a minute jog and then 30, followed by 30 seconds of running. And what are those jog to run paces supposed to feel like? Yeah, so on the jogging, when you're doing that, you are able to breathe, talk, um, and moving in the same format to your body. You're doing the same thing. You're just not exerting the pressure and the force and the drive to go forward that you need for the run, which leaves your heart rate down a little bit lower. So you're still looking for a heart rate up to where that is still exercise, it's still moving. You're not trotting here and you're not walking at this point, you are jogging. So similar to the pace that you would do an 800 meter here at the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of what you're looking for. Something you can hold a little longer than just a minute or two it's not not a sprint right um there's some level of recovery coming in those jogs yep and then for the 30 second run you're looking for what you would do a 200 in the middle of a workout it 200 pace in the middle of a workout so it's not a sprint but it is a run you're looking to where you are busting your butt to get back before that clock right okay and then back to your one minute jog no break in between go right into your jog Another 30 second run, back to your jog, another 30 second run. When you finish your 30 second run on the first one, you're gonna go into a walk. 
when we're talking about a walk, we are not talking about just a real saunter. We are talking about a walk. But in that 30 seconds, your heart rate's gonna come down to where you're moving your body efficiently and you're still walking, but you're bringing your heart rate way down. Yep, so yep. make sure once you hit uh, the rest periods too, you don't collapse over and, just, and you're not chugging along this way. Make sure you're staying up nice and upright, keep your lungs open. Right. Um, that way you can breathe and recover, but you're still moving. Right, so, then what's next? All right, after that, we're gonna be the, the same movements, but times are gonna change a little bit. We're gonna go uh, cut that minute jog down to 30 seconds. So we're gonna have 30 second jog followed by 30 seconds of running. Again, for three rounds here, this is gonna be the, uh, the shortest little chunk of these. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna, same thing with the jog, same thing with the run. We're gonna be going through it for three rounds and then be followed with another 30 seconds of walking again. Um, because we have a little bit shorter jog, uh, it's gonna, your heart rate is gonna be up higher, but you're gonna be trying to hold the same paces that you were here. Um, this one's just gonna be a little bit more challenging and it'll continue to get more challenging as we work down. Correct. And then after that, walk for 30 seconds. And again, don't extend these walks. These walks are designed for a certain amount of time so that your heart rate comes down, but not too far down. Your last one is gonna be the hardest. The last one, you're gonna get 30 seconds of a jog and then we're gonna run for a full solid minute. And you guys, a full solid minute is a 200 meter run in here. We have people that run our 200 meter runs in here anywhere from 45 seconds to like a minute 10. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what that minute run is. And what you guys will notice is that if you guys use your arms effectively and in running, if you allow your body to be forward a little bit and allow that foot to press off, and it's just like a pull-up or a kipping pull-up where you're actually using the momentum of your body to help your stride in not having to press your body really, really hard and press it forward, it's kind of already falling forward. And as you're falling forward, if you're using that arm effectively, that lat muscle is also pushing you forward. So using your body to be able to make this run more efficient. And finally, at the very end, Yep, so we got a two minute rest after all of these running intervals. Um, that rest is gonna be a nice time for you to kind of meander over back home or to a nice place where you can set up to do a little two minute plank. That's right. And with that two minute plank, what we're looking for is we're looking for a zero to 120 second plank. If you need to break that up, that's fine. Make your breaks as short as you possibly can and try to get that plank in. With that plank, we are looking for an elbow plank and with an elbow plank, our hands are flat on the ground, our butt is flat, we are not mountains, and we are not beaches in our plank. Uh -huh. We are, our butt is flat, and everything is engaged. So tighten your core, bring your rib cage up, tighten your butt, tighten your quads, and just hang out here for a little while. Find some place you can look at, the, look at something that's beautiful or have a conversation, whatever works. That plank is also gonna be part of your recovery. So you guys have fun with this. Get a chance to do some intervals. That's what, that's what builds the engine running. Yeah, and one thing just uh, to add on top of that too, um, going from the run to the jogs, it's gonna be a similar feeling. Like if you're in here and we're doing a workout, I um, can't, can't remember off the top of my head what the workouts are with like 400 meter runs in them, but um, when you do a whole bunch of work in the gym and your heart rate's jacked up and then you have to go out for a run, that's one of these things that, on top of engine building, this will help with mentally as well. You can kind of know what pace you need to hold that will actually allow you to recover, but you can still move pretty fast on that run as well. Super cool, that, that would be good information for the gym later. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right guys, I hope it's a nice day. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Bye.